Okay, welcome to part three of this uh, series. If you haven't seen part one and part two, please see those. Otherwise, this part will not make any sense. All right, so, so far we can actually drag our image around in here. However, if you notice when I drag it to a certain corner like here, the image becomes selected and we don't want this kind of thing. We don't want the image to be selectable at all, like when I move it out there. So in order to do that, we can make the image unselectable by adding some few, um, I'll just copy some, some uh, CSS there. So what this is, is simply user select, which is set to none. However, because some browsers don't have universal support for this one. So that's why I put all these mods or for Opera, Mozilla and the WebKit for Chrome and so on. So just add and copy all this and the selection thing is going to be a thing of the past. So let me see. Okay, there we go. Another problem that I have noticed is that when I'm dragging, for example, if I start dragging from in here and then I drag outside here, all right, and then when I come back, even without clicking the button, this still moves. This is because the on mouse up event happens on the window and it doesn't happen on the div itself. So we have to put it on the window as well. So let's go down here and do that. I'm going to say window dot on mouse up and go to mouse up is equal to function. Well, let's get the event just in case we need it. So all I'm going to say in here is mouse uh, down is equal to false. Okay, so let's do that. Mouse down is equal to false. So let me see if that sorts the problem. So I'll click in here, drag outward, then let go and come back in and voila, everything seems to be working just fine. All right, another problem we have here is that when I'm clicking and dragging, for example, I'll click here, you see it sticks to the top corner of the image. This is not what I want. What I want is if I click and drag from any location, it should move the image accordingly from exactly where it is at that time. So in order to do that, <clears throat> what we have to do, excuse me, what we have to do is find out, figure out how much the mouse has actually moved and then add that movement to the current position of the image. So in order to do that, let's set a few variables here. Let's say, let's mark the initial, uh, the initial position of the mouse. Let's say init for initial, init mouse x, which is the x position is equal to zero. So let's set it to zero first. We're going to put this outside the function so that we can access it in a, in the other functions as well. So let me use Y there. And also let's do one for the image itself and say init image X. This is the initial position of the image. So let's duplicate that and Y is equal to zero. So we set all these to zero. Now these guys, I want uh, when I hit the mouse down, in this case, when I mouse uh, down, where is that here? Mouse down on, I want these guys to be set. So I want this, the, the, the script to, uh, to monitor, uh, to monitor where the mouse is and where the image is as soon as I hit the down uh, button, the, the mouse down, sorry. So this one will be equal to, let's put event here so that we can capture that event from the mouse down click. So let me say event dot client X. So this is the position of the mouse at that time. So we copy it, paste and put Y. Okay, that's fair enough. Now the position of the image though is going to be image dot, um, let's use offset here, offset left. The reason I use offset instead of style.left because style contains the px, the pixel value, which is a pain to do math with. So I would rather use the offset left in this case. Now offset left, as we looked at it earlier, we need to subtract the con container offset as well in order to get the actual left position of the image. So let me copy this as well, the container left, so that we can subtract it here like, like, like that. Mm -hmm. 
So let me do the same thing for the Y. Now Y is top here and then top over there as well. So what we've done here is as soon as I hit the down mouse button, mouse down button, uh, I get the initial position of the mouse and the initial position of the image. Okay, so let's go back here and use some of this stuff inside the function here on the mouse move. So let's go in, let's say, uh, so when the, when the mouse, uh, we've set the position of the, sorry, the mouse, when we hit the down button, but this is on the mouse move. So after we move, let's capture that and then subtract the two. Okay, so let me going to say ver, mm -hmm, ver x is equal to, okay, the x position, the x uh, is going to be equal to event dot client x, the current now position of the, of the mouse, subtract from the initial position of the mouse. So if we subtract those two, we get how much the mouse has actually moved in the X. And let's do the same thing for the Y. Let's change that, okay. So we now have the movement of the X and the Y. So what we need to do now is to add that to this, to the current position right now. Okay, and so we have the current position of the image uh, up there. So let's uh, let's add that to to it. So let's say x is equal to current position, which is uh, uh, init image x, which is where the image is right now. We add the x. Okay. So what we've done now is that, oh, sorry about that, is that the current position of the image, we've added this movement that has happened here. So if we moved 10, the mouse 10 pixels, we are simply adding to the X of the image, the current position of the image, we're adding 10 pixels. So let's add the same thing, let's do the same thing to the Y rather. Uh, this should be capital Y, like that. So Y is equal to init image Y plus Y. So now all we need to do here is just assign this to the X and assign this to the Y. This should actually sort the problem out. So let's see what we've done. Let me refresh and let me click and drag. And as you can see, it's working pretty awesomely. So if I click even here, it won't snap like it used to do, like so. It will be very, very smooth. All right, this is great. So let's do one last thing before we close this part. As, as you can see, when I refresh the page, the image comes up on the top there. Uh, so I want it to be centered in the, to be centered. I want it to fill up this area so that uh, it's ready for cropping as soon as we load the image. So in order to do that, we'll look at which, which of the two sides is smaller. So the smaller side should fill the entire image because it's actually smaller. Okay, so let's try and do that before we close up. So in order to do that, let's create a function called reset. Function reset image, okay? Let's do that, reset image. Now to reset the image, we have to know the uh, which which of the two is uh, bigger than the other? So let's let's ask that question and say if image dot natural width. So the natural width is the actual width of the image, not this resized version on the screen, but the actual width of the image on file. If that is greater than the natural height which in this case it is, the width is uh, is greater, height like that. If that is true, let's do something here. Let's set the image uh, height, because the image height is smaller, let's set it to the maximum. So what we're going to say is image dot, uh, image, sorry, dot style dot width, is equal to <coughs> the container dot uh, 
clan the clan height oh sorry uh, it's not the width but the height we are dealing with okay sorry about that so the, the the height is going to be greater okay so let's see if that actually happens all right it's not happening because we haven't called the reset so we have to call the reset function immediately so let's go up uh, here somewhere and call it let me put my semicolon and let's call that one boom okay so that one is as big as it should be okay so now we had defined since we had defined the image uh, had we defined it no we had not we did not define the width of the image oh yes we did because the width of the image is 400 pixels so let's remove that part so that it doesn't influence the image that way okay so now when we refresh the image is full size like this and we can actually move it around but also if you notice the image is not in the center on this side on the uh on, on the other side it's not in the center so let's do that now in order to figure out the center of this uh it's pretty easy let's uh before we go even further here let me go back to the reset image let's also make sure that the image top for example the style dot top should be equal to zero in this case so that we make sure that it's right at the top okay now we, we have to set the sideways to be in the center as well now in order to do that we just have to subtract the the width of the image subtract the container width and then this extra part we divide it by two and then once we get this other part to the other side then the image will be in the center so instead of explaining let me let me let me show that so since we haven't actually explicitly set the width uh, of the image so our the the client uh, width of the image is going to be zero at this point so what we need to do is let me go in here and create a uh, a variable called ratio and we're going to say var ratio is equal to we want to determine the ratio between the natural width and the natural height of the image so that once we resize one part of it we'll know how to resize the the other side okay so now what we're going to do is we say var ratio is equal to the same uh, the same two divided so divide by so once we divide the image and the the natural width and the natural height will get the ratio so we know the width is greater here that's why we put the width at the beginning okay so we have we now have a ratio we may need to use this ratio later on so what i'm going to do is just copy this uh, variable to the top here and declare it and say ver ratio is equal to let's set it to one for now okay so that here we simply update the ratio okay right so once we divide we know what the ratio is between the uh, width and height so we can use that to our advantage let's go down here and use it to set so this one is container use it to set the width as well so the width is going to be um container width multiplied by ratio container width multiplied by ratio since this one is equal to the container height and so container width by ratio so let's let's test that and see if it actually works so let me refresh okay so it seems there's no difference which is cool which means we've got the right width and height so which means now client width of the image is going to be set to something but uh, to confirm why i'm doing this why i had to do this let me let me show you that if i alert here i send an alert of uh, image dot client uh, width you will see that this value is currently at zero so let me refresh that and you see that value is actually at zero 
because there's nowhere in uh, in here even even on the image itself where we actually set the width we had removed it here so it's actually not set yet all right so but if i add it there now and then i move the alert down here we'll see that client width should be equal to something like that okay so now we can use that for some math mathematics which is good so now we know that the top is like that so what we need to do we've set the width and the height what we need to do now is to center this image like that something like that okay so let me put it there so in order to set it we have to set the image left side of the image so in order to set that part we're going to say uh, let me create a variable called extra now right here i'll say var extra is equal to because this extra we want to find this extra part that is going beyond the box this extra part so this extra part we cut it into move the other one to the other side so we're going to say image dot uh because it's bigger we know it's bigger dot client width minus container dot client width so when we subtract the container from the image we get this extra part so we have to divide it by two because we are only interested in half of it so instead of a bracket let me put the bracket here so that it evaluates these two and then later divides by two okay so now that that number we got is how much we're supposed to move the left of the image in the negative so then we can safely say let me remove this alert and say image dot style dot left should be equal to since the top top is set to zero the left will be equal to extra now since extra is actually a positive value it's going to go in the other way so let's test that and you see it goes in the other way so we have to make it a negative value so it goes to the other side so in order to change a positive to a negative we just multiply by negative one so let me refresh that and when i do as you can see the image has gone to the center which is exactly what we want so when i refresh it starts off as the image in the center like that then i can move it around okay now we don't like to see this extra part here so in order to cut that out we go up to the top we go to the container and tell it that anything that's overflowing should be hidden overflow hidden okay so we won't need this border anymore i can simply remove it so when i refresh now this is what we see the overflow is hidden all right so we can move it around like this and that is awesome now unfortunately there is a miss there's a mismatch here let me undo that border thing and get it back there's something that's not right there it's like the this thing and the other one are misaligned so we're going to handle that in our next part so leave a like a comment or whatever it is and i'll see you in the next video